Welcome to Coffee Creek, the site of one of Washtot's fish passage barrier corrections, located in Mason County along US 101 near Shelton. This was Washtot's first ever standalone fish passage project using the design-build method of delivery, where innovation and coordination were crucial to success. Design-build allowed Washtot's consultant contractor team to perform design and construction. In this instance, one design builder reduced overall project timelines, cost, and allowed for innovation. The barrier originally consisted of three corrugated steel culverts, which posed issues to fish passage due to high water velocities and insufficient water depth for adult fish. One of the original design concepts included fixing the barrier under the highway. This concept posed many complexities from an engineering standpoint, it would have required significant construction through both directions of traffic and on and off ramps. There were also several existing environmental resources that needed consideration. So the design builder got creative. After careful review, planning, and outreach, the final design eliminated not only the fish barrier that crossed the state highway and ramps, but also eliminated the county-owned barrier as well. The highway interchange improved the southbound exit and on-ramps. In the end, this design cost less than the original design, making it a tremendous success functionally and financially. This project was no easy feat. There were many existing conditions that had to be considered, the first of which were surrounding wetlands. It was important to the project to avoid these high-value resources. The second consideration was nearby trees, Large conifers and maples were important to nearby landowners for both scenic purposes and reducing roadway noise. Therefore, impacts to trees had to be avoided or mitigated. Traffic control was also another big consideration. US 101 is the lifeline to the Olympic Peninsula. Ramps provide entrance and exit routes to Shelton. Nearby property owners were also important to this project since Coffee Creek runs through their backyards. As you can see, there were a lot of considerations on this project that were important to minimize environmental impacts, as well as taking our key partners into account. Therefore, the design-build method of delivery was selected with the idea that the innovation would lead to a solution that accomplished all the project goals, which it certainly did. Replacing the existing fish barrier at its location would have been expensive, time-consuming, and would have affected resources as well as the traveling public. Instead, the stream was rerouted to avoid the highway altogether. This also eliminated the downstream county barrier that likely would not have been corrected for many years to come, which made the habitat immediately accessible to fish. Leaving the existing Coffee Creek Channel that remained east of US 101 after the project was complete provided more habitat for fish spawning and rearing. You might be asking yourself, well, what about that portion of Coffee Creek that was abandoned when you plugged these culverts? Well, that's a good question. We didn't completely cut off flow to lower Coffee Creek. So just on the other side of the highway here, there's actually about a one third square mile subwatershed of Coffee Creek that drains the hill slope back behind us here. And it feeds into some wetlands that actually we were trying to avoid doing any damage to by choosing the, the approach that we did. So we avoided hurting any wetlands, we avoided disrupting the, the forested hill slope, and instead what those two things are doing together for us is providing enough water, enough hydrology into Lower Coffee Creek that there's actually water still flowing through the, the West Deegan Road uh, box culvert crossing um, when this project was completed, we added some stream bed material that, that we didn't need to use on this part of the site over there to kind of put together a geometry that better matched with uh, the hydrology available there. That remnant creek back there serves as a backwater refugia. So picture you've got all this water coming down Coffee Creek, all this water coming down Goldsboro Creek, little fish have emerged from the reds, they're getting washed out to Oakland Bay, but they're not ready to be there yet. They can just peel off into the remnant Coffee Creek channel and that serves as a rearing area. So 
Just because we rerouted the Coffee Creek channel doesn't mean we created a problem on the other side. Quite the opposite. We addressed a partial barrier at the West Egan Road crossing. We removed those fish weirs that can serve as barriers. And we did some things to enhance the habitat that was there that was degraded by too much water coming down and are fully utilizing water that's coming out of the hills, coming out of those wetlands. And so you might actually think of it as a smaller version of Coffee Creek. Overall, this project improved access to over 13 miles of fish habitat in the watershed. The new stream provides dynamic habitat for fish, brought about by a well-designed channel shape, large woody material, and log weirs. In fact, adult chum salmon began using this new stream just days after project completion. Innovation and design of this project has earned several awards, including a National Recognition Award from the American Council of Engineering Companies as part of the 2021 Engineering Excellence Awards. WashDOT remains committed to removing barriers to fish under state highways. WashDOT will continue using innovation to get the job done while working to help keep people moving. Learn more about our work, upcoming projects, and view annual progress reports on WashDOT's Fish Passage webpages. Thank you for watching.